Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner, Classic Class Non-Classic. This episode 905 and double shot number 799. I have two Batman trades. First up, it is Batman White Knight, written and drawn by Sean Murphy. Yep, the same guy who worked with Scott Snyder on the series The Wake. Yep, this is set in an alternate timeline. You can tell that by the back. By the fact of the strange looking collar that Batman has. Something he does not have in the regular continuity. Also, everybody's costumes are completely different. It's it, The way that the song operates, his art set was very similar to that of the artist who did the Arkham Manor series. It's a very similar art style. Mm -hmm. And one thing I love about this series, there are actually references to Batman movies. Yes. Heck, there's even a reference to the Batman 6 TV show. Yeah. We, the main the main character, aside from Batman, the only other focused character of the series is, in fact, the Joker. Now we have Batgirl in here, but wearing completely different outfits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, the Joker is Jack Napier. Mm -hmm. And apparently, believe it or not, prior to this issue's release, prior to, I think it was issue two, there was some controversy over him being in bed with Harley Quinn, butt naked. I'm like, seriously? You're going to complain about that? Heck, I looked at this recently. I'm like... You're going to complain about the fact that the, that Jack Napier is in bed with Harley Quinn. They're two fully grown adults and they had sex. And plus, you don't see Harley Quinn's nipples because they're covered up by a war balloon, which ingenious, ingenious idea to do. Yeah. Of course, I should point out, though, this was the first series released under DC's Black Label imprint. Yeah. There is also another series going on right now called Black Batman Damned. Which sees, well, in the first issue of his controversy due to the fact that, well, we have a full frontal nudity scene for Batman for some strange reason. I have no idea why in the world that was a good idea. Yeah. Of course, you also have Mr. Freeze, Matt Hatter, Clayface show up in here as well. The Penguin and Riddler show up in here, but they don't do much of anything. Heck, Bane looks like this. Yeah, this is supposed to be Bane. Yep. Oh, yeah, mostly everybody's under mind control for most of the series by Jack Napier. Mm -hmm. Except Harley Quinn. He's, she's practically the only one who isn't. He also starts up this special task force to work with vigilantes. Kind of like giving, well, vigilantes their own badge to work with the government. Mm -hmm. Well, the one thing, and it's part of, the, basically what he did as, as elected official, he basically took the Batman Devastation Fund and redistributed re and made it into the Gotham terrorist, uh, terrorist organization. Well, it's basically an anti-terror group. It's it's a combination of police and vigilantes working side by side. We had driving their own Batmobiles. Yeah, that's the kicker for this thing. And this happens like roughly like halfway through the series. And at least gotta praise Sean Murphy for actually making these cars look quite interesting. Yeah, the cars look like they pulled out of Mad Max. Like especially seeing Max's uh, special uh, police scarf from the from the uh, first two films. Though it did make a cameo in the third in the fourth in the recent film. Mad Max Fury Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, we also see an appearance by, of all things, and I thought this was really cool, that apparently, now apparently this is the Batmobile for the series. Yeah. This thing right here, that's the Batmobile. That's the Batmobile that Batman himself drives, which kind of looks like something out of, well, Jack Kirby's fourth world by, by the design of the car. Also, Mr. Free shows up in here as well. Yep. So, I thought this was really cool on the part of Sean Murphy to do this. You have Batgirl gets her hands. Actually, it's not get his hands. I believe it or not, the Batmobile from the Tim Burton movies. Yes! Anybody who's seen the Tim Burton Bat movies knows this is the Batmobile from that very film. And that's not the only car from Batman Live Action that shows up in this very series. Oh no. Like, toward the end of the series, we have Harley Quinn driving the Adam West Batmobile. <laughs> that's not a joke. That seriously is true. It's one of the most funniest things to see in the whole series. Harley Quinn driving a Batmobile. Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised this car exists because it's popular, so why the heck not? People love this car. Mm-hmm. Let me show it off in here. The Harley Quinn driving the 60s Batmobile, which which I still think is so cool. He 
Here she is. Actually, she's writing. She's, uh, yeah, here it is. The 60s Batmobile. Yep, the Batmobile from the Adam West TV show. Yeah. This series is actually really good. And I love also the, like, like I said, I love all the Easter eggs from the live action films in here. Yeah, as far as I can tell, they don't throw the tumbler in here, surprisingly. I mean, they have... And they, they don't even throw the Batmobiles from the Jim Schumacher films, which, okay, that's interesting. So, we throw in the Ford from the 6 TV show, the Tim Burton Batmobile, and, yeah, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing about this series, the one thing that... Sean Murphy said that he would cut down the politics. I mean, there was some politics early on in this series, reading on. Yeah, this is only just an eight-issue limited series. And unlike a couple other series that came out last year, this series was not delayed at all. I know, I know Bang Conquest received a delay. I know Doomsday Clock was receiving delays. As a matter of fact, the series still ain't finished yet. Mm -hmm. But this, really good. Loved it. At the end of the series, Joe, Harley Quinn marries Jack Napier. Yep, get this book a 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, it's interesting though know, they gave the Joker the name Jack Napier from the Tim Burton Batman movie, the character played by Jack Nicholson of all people. And by the way, this Jack Nicholson, this this particular Jack Napier is nothing like the way he is portrayed in live action at all. It's it's pretty much in name only. It's a similar name, and it just basically. A name that he probably picked because, well, people assume that, that Joker's real name is Jack Napier because of the Tim Burton film. Mm -hmm. Alright, moving on from present day to the past, we have Batman Golden Age Volume 5, collecting collecting Batman 16 and 20, Death to Comics 75 to 81, World's Finest 10 to 11. In these issues, we have the debut of the Cavalier. He is a villain who fights with a sword. Yep. We also see the debut of the Penguin. Yeah, he, for, he shows up in here as well. We see many appearances by the Joker. Oh yeah, and also Batman 16 is noteworthy for the first appearance of this character. Now, some of you are probably thinking, really? The debut of this character? Okay. Oh yeah, I should point out though, this character looked completely different in his debut appearance compared to modern day. Oh yeah, and he met the Joker after his debut appearance. Hmm. Let's see if I can find him here. I know he shows up in here. The first appearance of Alfred Pennyworth. Now, some of you probably look at this picture like, that's not Alfred Pennyworth. Where's the mustache? And why is he like that? Well, this is how he first showed up in the comics. But this, this is Alfred's first appearance in the comics. And this is from, I think this is from Batman 16, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Batman 16. Yeah. A lot of really classic issues in here. Like, all of them. Yeah. All the stories in here are really good. Now, the writing in here is done by Bill Finger. He writes pretty much all the issues with these fun people in the writing. We have Don Cameron, Ruth Bunny... Leon Kauf Kaufman, Horace L. Gold, Joseph Green, and Joe Submission. Artwork by Bob Kane, Jerry Robinson, George Russis, Dick Spring, Jack Burney, Ray Bardenley, Fred Ray, and Norman Fall Fallen. Artwork on the cover is by Evan Doc Steiner, who... Actually, now, when, when I first saw this guy's artwork, early on, I thought this was the late Darwin Cook's artwork. Nope. As far as I can tell, I think he was imitating him for a little while for these covers. And then now he's now he going for the style gnome used by Mike Manalia. He's it's a, it's a somewhat similar style. It's very little. It has a, it's a little bit in common with Mike Manalia's style, but it's a good style. I love it. Mm-hmm. All these issues in your pure classic. Give this book a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Not much else to say. Just a bunch of really good classic stories. Now, in the case of these three series, they're in here. Now, 
when I got to, when I read the Batman archive books, which actually the main Batman archive books, those actually collected the Batman issues. The first I got to in those issues was actually issue 16. Yes, believe it or not, I got, that's as far as I got with it. For Detective Comics in the Batman Dark Knight archive books, those I got to issue 86. And the World's Finest one was collected in Batman in World's Finest archives. Mm -hmm. So basically, this book is a combination of about several different books altogether. Though there's also an omnibus called Batman Golden Age Omnibus, which it's a lot thick of a book and it contains a lot more issues. I mean, overall, I mean, from Batman, you have a good five issues. For Detective Comics, you have a good seven. In World's Finest, you just have two stories. Yeah. Though Batman, at this point in time, around these issues, basically, Batman up until issue 16, the book was coming out every four months, basically quarterly. Story 17 started increasing the number of issues. Yeah, it didn't get to the monthly basis. It was up until like a few years ago until Denny O'Neill took over the book. That is pretty much when the book came out monthly. Mm -hmm. Where it started putting out more than just 10, 11 issues a year. Heck, it took a long time for this series and a lot of DC solo books to come out basically more than just once every two or three months. It took, took them a long time. Good, like almost... 40 years. If Batman was produced monthly, since it, it, if it had produced 12 issues per year, there would have been like over a thousand issues by now. But, excuse me, you gotta blame DC's publication schedule when they come to Batman for the first like 30 years of existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one only covers roughly like one year worth of comic time, it covers like 1943 to 1944. Yeah. Roughly like almost one year of comic time. Yeah, publication period. Okay. So that's it for this particular review. Stay tuned later for my review for at least one more comic corner. And two manga reviews. Okay. But until you see the next review. Bye.